All right, so I think that we're good. I'm looking at, I can see me in the little corner. My name's right, you in your corner, your name's right. I think we're ready to get started. So, are you ready, Justin? I guess so. Okay. Uh, so much homework. <clears throat> yeah, so much homework. Okay. Oh, let's see if it works. Let's do this. Here we go. Hi, everybody. I'm Rachel. I'm Justin, not Steven. <laughs> that was great. I love that. And um, we are the Faint Divinities, a channel here on Twitch. Again, if you're watching us live or you're on YouTube, and that's fine too, dedicated to running and talking about Daggerheart, which is the new tabletop RPG from the Darrington Press and Critical Role groups that is currently in open beta version as of today it is june 11th right now as of today 1.4.2 we were on 1.4.1 yesterday for our game and now we're in the next version very many excitement for that um and justin and i this is wild uh just to to give a little added context so in these sessions, instead of playing, what we actually do is we talk about the new releases and what you can expect out of, for example, 1.4.2. Um, usually, my co-host is uh, Steven, but of course, he is closing tonight, so he's unavailable. And Justin, I really appreciate you being here. Um, but. I did throw, or I didn't throw, Matt, Matthew Mercer, and Spencer Stark threw us um, kind of a wrench because this one didn't, the, each time, every month that one of these has gone live, one of these new versions has gone live, they do a live stream, usually in the middle of the day. I get time to digest, and then Steven gets off work, and he's like, what happened? And I'm like, don't worry about it. I had all day here, all of my notes, da 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 da, -da. And I can very eloquent, not eloquently ever, but I at least am sane as I'm going through things. The wild thing this time, for those of you who are not in the know, is that the live stream was at 7 p.m. Pacific. It is 8, 10 p.m. Pacific right now, which 10 for those of you in central time zones. Um, yep. So we literally just stopped watching. We were watching a lot of it together, Justin and I, and it is a whirlwind. I usually am very emotional as those are happening. And Justin got to see that for the first time. So I just love what's happening here. Um, but anyway, uh, so let's talk about it though. So on the screen, I do have a dagger heart and you can see it right there. New open beta version 1.4.2 is live. It is in fact true. Um, the very first thing that I want to note and it outside of the context of any ov other open beta stuff is I have known this. I think that I have known this for some time, but I keep seeing in the discord communities in other areas. Hi, Kayla, um, that people are not aware this open beta is not something that will be open for the remainder of the year. It's closing at the end of summer or it is closing at the end of July. So TLDR, too long didn't read, too long didn't watch the rest of this. Open beta for Daggerheart is closing in another month and a half. So if you are one of those people who's been waiting in the wings, thinking about getting in there, you don't have a lot of time. At the end of July, they are going to still keep submissions open. They're going to accept feedback, but it won't be to make massive changes anymore. In their words, they're basically going to collate all the feedback that they've gotten until that point, go in-house, talk about things, and then kind of Willy Wonka's factory, close the gates, figure things out, release candy to children who are going to inevitably die within their doors. I'm kidding. It's not going to happen like that, but it is. Get out there. If you want to get involved in this, this is the time. Um, and I've stressed myself out because of some of this even more thinking about it, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. Justin, did you know about that piece? Oh yeah. I didn't realize when it was specifically in. I figured it would at some point, but didn't realize it was already like, you know, end of next month yeah. especially like when they're only re probably releasing 1.5 midway through next month i uh, i i i'm i'm hesitant to speak on it i almost think that they're going to release it at the beginning of july um 
because how would they only give 15 days to review 1.5? Mm. Uh, I don't know. That's crazy, right? But anyway. That's my big note before we dive into changes. And fortunately today, a lot of you who are joining this, again, if you're not in the know, you might be thinking, why do we care about a minor revision? My answer is that I don't really. Um, no, I'm kidding. Minor revisions are great. Uh, we got other stuff today that I don't think anybody could have anticipated. I don't think they said that they were going to do it, but they started talking about potential 1.5 changes. It feels epic. It feels wild. And that's the last version that we will have access to in open beta. Um, so let's touch base on a few things. So first, I always do this at the beginning of these in case you're new around here. Remember that everything is accessible through daggerheart.com. If you go to daggerheart.com, I always wonder, I might have to again blur that. I put stuff into my little screen and then who knows what it says. But anyway, if you go to www.daggerheart.com, you will see this friendly banner. You go down here to the play daggerheart icon and then it will direct you to an area where I I am not going to put my email in so that you don't have access to this. Um, remember, if you want to get access to some of the base tools, scroll up. Well, that's kind of my little theme here is, I don't know if it's intentional, but it always lands you here. Scroll up and you can see the web version of the changelog, an FAQ, a blog, all of your surveys, including the heavy hitters playtest survey. Um, but the change log is absolutely here. Uh, remember, this is where I like to look. It's accessible everywhere. If you are, remember, an online TTRPG player, they do have the Demiplane Nexus, which is through uh, app.demiplane.com and accessing the Daggerheart Nexus. You can get in to find the materials and they have the change log details in there. If you're a manuscript girly or boy, if you don't like being called a girly, that's fine too. Um, you can open up the manuscript itself after downloading the materials and you can find those details right at the top of the open beta playtest information. Um, but again, I'm gonna look through here. Remember though, just to touch base very briefly before we go back, if you do want the materials, you're gonna put your email in. You press submit, it will give you the download options, just like in 1.4.1, I believe. I'm, I'm not sure where we got the change. It's isolated, so you don't get a huge packet now. You're gonna get GM materials, changed materials, player materials. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and dive into those updates. So, um, I did also see the head on there where, uh, like, if you already have all the old, older stuff, you can download just the new stuff as well. I don't know if that was new for this cool. one. I, I don't know if I saw that last time. No, I, th I think handy. that one was there last time. And it's always been, like, a folder inside mm -hmm. of the batch of, here are just the changes. Those are my favorite areas. That's, I don't, mm. I don't know if I should broadcast this too loudly. That's basically all I look at anymore. <laughs> I look at the change log. And yeah, I like, I make it succinct for myself. I, you can actually see that if I toggle really quickly, that's what I have open are the cards that have changed and the uh, pages that have changed, which at this point is isolated just to Guardian. We're not getting sweeping overhauls this time, guys, which brings us back to our change log. Um, remember that we didn't do a full video on 1.4.1, which again, we're in minor revisions at this point. Um, I won't talk about that because we actually did talk about it in one of our episodes. Go watch that. <laughs> I dare you. No, I, I, it's it's pretty brief, though. There There weren't any universal changes I can't say that word every time every time I say universal universal changes um, it was stuff like changing of the orc tusk features it was stuff like the druid and serif class features getting adjusted in character sheets um, there there really wasn't a ton uh, and so we didn't do a big one of course our table is always impacted because bards y'all just get all the love don't you Kayla but but Talking about 1.4.2, the reason we're all gathered here today is look at the full length of changes, guys. This is it. 
scroll up, scroll down, that's it. So mostly it's good, it's on bug fixes uh, effectively, um, but the big ones that have changed are really these two concepts. First, the Guardian class feature and level up options have changed. Justin, I don't know how closely you were aware of what shifted in the Guardian specifically. Do you well, have notes? I need, I need to pull it up. It's like the document, the one I had downloaded was a little off, but I believe they were just fixing like a wording uh, thing on the unstoppable feature. Yeah. I'm gonna I see if I can not the difference real quick, but like it was very minor, but on the level up was definitely the bigger one with the thresholds changing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yes, yes, yes. That's right. So if we go to like the level up sheet, the thresholds absolutely are changing in terms of the health and everything. So, and God, we're going to talk about that a little bit later as well. But um, this was, again, I can tell that we are really in those minor revisions because even in the Darrington Press Discord, where it is people that are just so much better at me than interpreting rules, and they were like, what has shifted here? It's so minute and ambiguous at this point it's just a lot but anyway um really if we i mean you can even see it in in this specific area of the 1.4.2 patch release area the class feature has changed and the level up options have changed so if we take a look at those areas here in the guardian sheet which again this is a quiet little document now used to every single class was in here and now it's just the guardian their class feature let's read it together unstoppable yeah, I, I just found the specific part i think that's different and so like on the first line it's like once per long rest you can choose to become unstoppable or it was you can become unstoppable mm. uh, and so it's clarifications like that but like the actual values of what you're gonna die you're using are all the same Okay, yeah, that's wild to me, yeah. Well, so once per long rest, you can choose to become unstoppable. Again, you still gain that unstoppable die. I still love that there's the little pinpoint there for you to actually, oh my gosh, Mr. Rootbeer himself. Rootbeer is a boy, right? <laughs> Look, oh, Apollo, why would you run away at this moment? We almost had double cats. <gasps> yeah. Rupert's a boy. We initially thought he was a girl, but then when we went by the vet, they corrected us. Hi, that's right. I know. That's Look at how beautiful he is. What a handsome little gentleman. He brought his little mouse. He's wanting to play fetch. Oh, that's very cute. My cat doesn't play fetch. He mostly plays cry at me until I refill the food bowl. It's a fun game for everyone. Um, All right, so... I don't think a lot is shifting here. Like Justin has said, and like I've seen in the Discord, there's not a lot different here. And then with those level up options, if you are playing a Guardian and you happen to have already leveled, um, I think again, Justin, you were saying it was related to the thresholds? Yeah, all the uh, thresholds are now like, uh, let's see, I have the old one pulled up here. Uh, where it was on for levels two to four, it was plus two on all of those. Mm -hmm. Where five to seven, it was plus two and plus three. Yeah. On levels five to seven, and then eight and uh, eight to ten went from. Let's see, it was one on evasion, two on major, three on severe, and then looks like it's uh, evasion is still the same, but the other two are just minus one. Yeah. Wow. It just drops by one all all all, all the way across. So. Okay. Yeah, we're yeah. just we're just like he's just not gonna get as much damage threshold increases, huh? And and this was something. So I was talking to Chris because we're already talking about additional campaigns that we might play and Chris has been talking about maybe doing a little guardian moment and um, he was like of course of course they've nerfed him again <laughs> like so so um, I don't know we'll we'll have to see how it feels and everything uh, I did feel like in the last iterations that we have received it felt like tanks were getting tankier. Maybe this mm -hmm. is a course correction from some of that you know we were really loving it. Um, we're going to talk about the heavy hitter irony here in a little bit, uh, but that's a really funny piece. We can spend as much time talking about this as we want because there's only two items, guys. The next piece and the bigger piece is the ancestries. So 
this was something that came up. Actually, I'm going to call out Rabbit from our Discord channel, who is, a, again, a person who's just better at mechanics than I am. Um, Rabbit had mentioned this when they first said, hey, for mixed ancestries, when they introduced that in, again, I believe 1.4, just flat. I don't think it was 1.4.1. I think it was 1.4. Um, mm -hmm. They said, hey, you can mix and match the traits from these cards. Rabbit in our Discord had said, you know what? Some of those are going to be overpowered. I would wonder if maybe we should isolate them um, down into kind of a category S and a category A. I don't know if that makes sense. Category A and a category B. Um, and you can only have an A from one and a B from another. They've done something like that here. In our ancestries now, and remember every ancestry since that update where mixed ancestries was introduced, you have two traits per ancestry. Now it requires choosing a feature from the top of an ancestry card and a feature from the bottom of an ancestry card. So if we, for example, go to some of the cards that have been updated, if I wanted to make a mixed ancestry dwarf giant, because again, it's so funny to me, just regular sized person, I could choose to take increased fortitude and reach, or I could choose to take endurance and thick skin because that is one from top and one from bottom. I could not take increased fortitude and endurance, and I could not take thick skin and reach. Jimbo, you, nothing is of, of concern to you as a full dwarf. Mm. Right? Not for the, not for mixing not for those, this. but if you look at the thick skin, they did adjust that one. Uh, so yeah. it's no longer with my proficiency in total. I, it's now half of that for my minor threshold. Yeah. So that's a little sad. My minor threshold, especially when I really need it in our moment in the campaign, uh, it's going to go down from three to two. I, I know. Listen, Matthew Mercer, Spencer Stark, we got to talk. Like we just, we, I ended our last stream less than 12 hours ago, or sorry, less than 24 hours ago uh, with it, the arch villain of this little arc looking up and smiling at them knowing that they're gonna go into combat and then you nerfed my dwarf you nerfed my dwarf <laughs> so good luck guys it's gonna be fine but i am uh, yeah so yeah i think that tends to also be a lot of the community feedback is that they felt like a lot of stuff was nerfed i i can't say a lot because how much really changed but um where the changes occurred, it felt like nerfing. Um, mm -hmm. I do think that they brought up a very interesting point, though, and I want to really hone in on this. A lot of us had thought was that they were going to strictly categorize things by the top one is the superpower of the dwarf, you know, increased fortitude. And the bottom one is the lesser ability. I don't think they've done that. Um, and in point of fact, I actually think that reach to me is better than endurance. Actually, for me, I, I that's a it's a different argument. All to I think it might be more comparison to like uh, one's more utility, where one maybe more you know power. Uh, I think that's probably true. I think that's probably true. But. They, when Matt Mercer and Spencer Stark were talking about this, and again, I don't know why I'm explaining to this to you as though you were Steven who's gotten off work, you were there. Um, but I don't think we were together at this point of the stream because we, I was still preparing and stuff. Um, but they said that basically the concept is future proofing, you know, because mm -hmm. in the future, and again, so many people are like, are we going to get more ancestries? Are we going to get more classes? Yes, you absolutely are at some point in the future. And if they ever want to do that, say, say that they grow this to a hundred different an ancestries. They might have areas where they need to be like, yo, hmm. we can't let that go with that or else we've made a god at level one. So being able to just isolate in that kind of a way gives them the ability to future proof those skill sets. I think that's reasonable. I get the like, ah, but I will say again, get in on this open beta. If you hate some of this that has changed and you're like, this is a really cool combo though. And now your ruling has made it unacceptable and uh, impossible to run. Matt and Spencer said, hey, if you see stuff like that, put it in a survey feedback. Let us know. We'll, we will look at it and consider, oh, yeah, that's not game breaking and it does look fun. Well, mm -hmm. we might change it. So 
be aware of that. Um, but yeah, that is like the biggest change and certainly the biggest thing that we've been talking about in the Daring to Press Discord. Um, but yeah, so guys. The only other bit of a note on that is just like uh, keep in mind which ones did get flipped to, from like top to bottom because like for Ribbit specifically was one that had long tongue at the top. That's now at the bottom and Vivius is up top. So if you're yeah. doing any like Ribbit uh, ancestry mixing, you may or may not have access to your tongue anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, your tongue may be gone if you were mixed ancestrying. I don't think anybody here was. Um, which, I mean, again, I'm so this again every single time that we have a change, Chris really has trouble because this uh, the Simia's evasion changed, or sorry, I think it was the agility changed order which means necessarily mm -hmm. that the other one did because there's only two but yep. he can't have the agility buff that he wanted that he was using in his fairy character and so he's just it's uh he's gonna have to do a little rewrite that's just what's gonna have to happen but it is um it's wild mm -hmm. i'm seeing that now too like the yeah. Yeah, wings are up top look benders at the bottom for fairy and then for mm -hmm. simia's natural climber and then nimble yeah yeah, absolutely. Okay, so now that's really most, those are the two biggest changes. There were minor adjustments. Again, we have the cards that have changed, um, but those are the biggest ones. Is there anything that you wanted to talk about specifically, Justin? Um. I mean, for 1.4.2, I mean, that was pretty much it. I know, like, all the rest, the, all the other notes they had were just saying, like, how it's got passed, like, the Guardian changes got passed just for copy stuff into the adventure and preparing for adventure and whatnot. Uh, and for the, even for the Marauders of Windfall, which I don't think it's, or, like, just came out, hasn't came out yet. It just, they already it, have it's, it's, it's out now. It is out now, but, um, but, yeah. We just haven't started it yet. That's right. <laughs> we, yeah, we just haven't started it yet because we had to kill a god, you know, a little primordial, mm -hmm, yeah. It's, it's a Monday. It's Monday. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, we're going to be starting. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But they were hinting at some of, the, like, the, you know, future changes and, like, the, what the they changed thing. for this and the hints at that as well. So, like, even making some of these changes, like, for the dwarf, like, reducing the minor threshold some, kind of leaning towards 1.5, which they were suggesting they may just be outright removing minor thresholds. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's we have to we have to hit that hard, okay? We really have to bring out the guns on that because I don't know who was listening closely to that, but the the crazy thing here is that we didn't just talk about 1.4.2. They also were like, "Hey, let's talk, give you some little insight into what will what we're thinking about for 1.5, which again is end game of open beta 1.5 is going to be likely the last i don't see any way that it couldn't be the last major version and i don't know if it'll have minors um mm. but the last major revision of open beta releasing in two weeks to a month we're not far out and so for them to give us that information was wild and it felt like a beautiful little narrative loop to me because when they said it, they started talking back about like what had kind of impacted their initial design build and stuff. So Justin said it already. One of the things that they said that we should look out for in 1.5 and maybe it'll stick, maybe it won't. Again, it's a, it's a, it's a test, it's a play test removal of all minor thresholds the daring to discord lost it we were all memeing away there were so many gifs gifs whatever however you call them everything remember guys if you are new this game is built on a premise and we're just gonna throw out the whole premise i don't understand of there's there are these three categories of damage that you can take M minor damage threshold, major, and severe, meaning you mark different values. If you take ma minor, you mark one health on your character sheet, and when you get max, you die. To get rid of the minor is wild. Just crazy. I'm really curious if they were only mentioning it here opposed to waiting for 1.5 is just to see like if there is backlash or people calling out ahead of time where, hey, here's all the problems with that just since it is the last big release. To give them a little like free feedback on like what could be going wrong with that. 
Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I just, I feel like every, I have to, again, y'all are getting the very emotional brain side of me because I didn't have time to digest it like I usually do. Um, mm -hmm. But emotionally, I I am bound in love by it to these three different categories. I even like the way it looks on the sheet. I think it's pretty. Um, I don't know <laughs> if I want it. I'm worried. I'm so worried. But also, doesn't this make sense now? When you see how the game has progressed, that minor threshold has always been what they've adjusted the most out of and that they've struggled <laughs> with. It's, again, a beautiful narrative loop of I feel like we're finding out what is really in their heads with this latest mm -hmm. update. Um, and just because, like, just because they remove it for 1.5 doesn't mean it will stay gone for the actual thing. It could just be like, hey, we've been iffy on this this whole time. Yes. So get rid of it. See how that plays out. Yes. And if we get a bunch of bad feedback, great. We switch it. Yeah. As always, this is play test. They are optioning out different types of a game. But I... I said it earlier today in the Darrington Press Discord. I was like, hey, guys, do you think that since we're only getting this minor revision that maybe we'll get another major, but it just won't be very big? And people were like, you know, it's a good question, Rachel. Who knows? And I was like, me, I don't. And then then they were like, maybe no more minor damage threshold. And I was like, yeah, you really got me. You really got me, didn't you, boys? Oh my God, I'm terrified of that one. Oh my God. Oh, I don't know what to do. Anyway, um, so, so, all right. However, that's not the only thing that they talked about. They also hinted at evasion. Am I right there, Justin? Uh, yeah, they were mentioning how that was a late addition, which I think may have just been kind of carrying over from the minor thresholds, like because we added evasion minor thresholds may not be as necessary because mm -hmm. you may just instead of beefing up that minor threshold beef up your evasion so you just don't get hit in the first place yeah. uh you know or for those type of characters uh but yeah they were noting how that was just a late addition in a uh, period i don't want this character sheet to not have evasion i love it i think it's beautiful again y'all are getting the emotional reaction from me right now but I am tied to this character sheet at this point. Guys, I guess it was the friends we made along the way. Like, I, I, don't, I don't think they're going to be removing that one for 1.5 because I think they were just like noting like why a minor threshold might be kind of like why we might, oh, like, yeah. why that would go away. Okay. Uh, but like that, that evasion there, like I don't want to say is like very like almost foundational what it seems like, even though it came in late for them, like for the gameplay, like it separates them from other systems. It does. Uh, a little more. Well, the system we're mostly familiar with. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it's also like, you have both of these. You have for the, the players that don't have armor, why do they have an armor class, you know? Yes, it's <laughs> but, yeah. true. Yeah. It yeah. makes a lot more sense. Yeah. I think that was really, again, I, I agree. I don't think that they're really talking about removing evasion. I think that uh, uh, it was a whirlwind after they talked about that minor damage threshold removal. I, I saw stars. I... I was really having struggles paying attention because I was having to look at all of the different chats and be like, guys, are we safe? Do we need to get on a lifeboat? It was really scary. And then they started talking about the evasion and I was like, ah, like I was really, really terrified. Um, but I think that it, the most interesting thing is kind of that subtle drop from Spencer that evasion was a late addition to this game. Like, and, and he, you know, I want to, I kind of want to hit on this because I took notes on several things of like late additions to the game. One of the late additions also, the lack of initiative in the action tracker. I think the lack of initiative probably was already built in kind of into the module itself, but the action tracker being a way to kind of coordinate those efforts and all of those details which makes sense because in a lot of narrative driven tabletop rpgs especially the kinds that i know spencer stark appreciates there's not really an action economy at all it's just act when you want to act you know unless you die <laughs> like um it definitely does help streamline the game so you're not waiting for five minutes for everyone to roll get the you know get everything in order great now we start yeah yeah 100 yeah, percent yeah. um, i'm going 
And it makes sense to me now because again, I really feel like we're getting to the end of, of a book where all of the chapters are starting to make sense. I'm Charlie Day and I'm touching like the board behind me and I'm like, Pepe Sylvia. I don't remember his name, but it really is the case of like, now I remember that that's a, if you are a person and again, be one of the people be submitting surveys, be, be a person. There's a question that's like, how do you like the action tracker? Do you think it's good? Should we get rid of it? There's like a whole piece on it. And I was like, this is a weird thing to call out. Makes sense now. It wasn't a test. It wasn't as thoroughly tested pre-launch. So just wild. So anyway, um, yeah, that's that's really, that's a, that's a big one. Um, okay. Other 1.5 big changes. The other big one was for, uh, they were noting about, people were asking about uh, druids and having more beast forms, uh, how armor interacts with that. But like it seemed like one of the ones they were hinting at was especially for like the higher tiers, like having more options. Like when you look at like level one for uh, beast forms, you have three options. Compare that to level nine, you have one option. Uh, you can flavor that, you know, however you want, but it's still like, there's not a lot of variation there. Yeah. Uh, but see, that's what it seemed like they were hinting at, was just, you know, trying to maybe scale that to where there's three for all of them or more for all around. Uh, but that, that's that's how that's what I was picking up on that. And then for how like armor interacts, it looked like that would just be some clarifications for it. Yeah, I, I think so too. Yeah, for sure. Druid continues. Hilariously, the change, the three classes, and maybe you disagree with this, the three classes that have changed the most throughout this process, in my opinion, have been Guardian, Bard, Druid. Those are the three. It's like those ones have these ambiguous shifting natures to them. Um, and I don't, they are such distinct classes. It's really like we have the whole group. We have a tank, we have a, um, a yeah, DPS they're, they're and a broad. support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's kind of crazy to me that, but Druid will always be the one that makes sense to me as <laughs> your problem child. Yeah. I don't want to say those are also going to be the more common ones, but those are the characters you see the most or hear hear about the most. It's you know your your paladin equivalent. Your I mean, you always almost always see a pal or a, oh sorry not guardian not seraph. I don't know why I'm mixing that up. Uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. You're, 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 you're fighter. You were blowing my mind because I was like, wait, <laughs> is the guardian the paladin? Because I, I had the seraph you pulled up on another screen. Was, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh uh, yeah, for yeah, reasons. Guardian, <laughs> fighter, you got your druid and bard. I mean, you almost always see those in every campaign nowadays. So. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Hilariously, well, I guess it's not that hilarious, except for in the context of this discussion, the two classes that I really am fighting for my life to make a decision between wanting to play is Druid and Seraph. Oh, I love a Seraph. It's so hard. Anyway, uh, but yeah, so Druid has just seen change after change, and they finally got a reprieve. And then today, when they were like 1.5, they were like, not for long bucko um mm -hmm. but it seems like a positive change and i don't think it's going to affect a lot of people but you can see it right here you can see level one three level two two level five two level seven two level nine all you have is a massive behemoth and honestly i have looked not as much at the druid items and just to clarify mm -hmm. when i say one category two categories these aren't the only animals these are like of level ones you could be an agile scout which includes like a fox or a mouse or a weasel um, at level seven you could be an aquatic predator like a shark or an orca but all they have at massive behemoth is an elephant a mammoth a rhinoceros no way to fly. huh what was that yeah, no no way to fly no way to no fly way to swim. And are you telling me at max level as a druid, I can't be like a sphinx or a dragon, or I don't think you could ever be one of those things, but like, let me, please? I know that they're beasts, but can I please be a magical beast? I want to, ugh. Have some, you know, owlbear equivalents, uh, some, some yes! griffins. Yes, yeah. a griffin, uh, a pegasus, a, a, a unicorn. <laughs> or thinking like more, you know, comparing like Delicious and Dungeon, you got your Chimera and your like big monster, or like, you know, mi mix match uh, yes, creatures. Yes, yes, oh, yes, yes. I want that. I want that. You could just, you could just be a mixed ancestry of all of them. And you have like a monkey tail and an elf tran. I, I mean, know. if you're, you're a high level druid, why not? Yeah, you know exactly. Yeah. You, yeah, we've, we've 
you know, the the eternal joke of the druids is that they just sleep with everyone. You know, that's a, that's a silly, that's a silly, outdated joke. But I think I'll play my druids very differently. Oh well, listen, I don't know what to tell you. Like, <laughs> like, like if you aren't playing a druid who is a pact of, uh, sorry, an oath of the ancients paladin, I don't know. That's just that's who I am. Um, anyway, okay, so. Yeah, changes upcoming to Druid. I think that was really it for 1.5, but those, I mean, honestly. With- well, they had the kind of more broad things they were starting to hint at. That seemed like it seemed separate from the players, but more for the DMs, which mm. stuff like the campaign uh, frames and some other things around that area, like and how yes. locations work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Talk about the, the, the frames, because wow, does that sound cool and good. Yeah, they were they were referencing like kind of uh, specific scenarios where those could work. They were saying that it might not be for every campaign, but especially with the ones where like basically it's players versus like uh, I don't want to say an apoc- apocalyptic scenario, but like you know the world's becoming corrupted, uh, shadows over the land. There's some big like you know uh, like Godzilla type uh, creatures kind of roaming the world and destroying stuff. Maybe uh, players could like, like this is more kind of stats for the world for the DM. Like where you, they might have stuff for like cities more specifically, where like you might can compare their like you know. Uh, financial well-being, their you know morale, uh, how the re- religion is doing, just kind of like that stuff for like stats for their city, but just expanding that to the world, or like say if it you do have that, and you do have these big kaiju type thing going around, or I think they were more specific referencing you know, Shadow of the Colossus. Oh yeah. Like, you know the players are going taking those out, that will then impact you know the health of the world. Uh, it could be you know for the better, for the worse. Um, depending on how the players are approaching it. This is one of those areas where I find this to be a double-edged sword. Because (laughs) on the one hand, I feel like, and, and they talked about, they spoke about this a lot, about they want to make this accessible to new GMs. And I've talked about that as I want this to be accessible for new GMs and new players, everyone. I want this to be the one. That has always been one of the most intimidating things when you are starting to work in a world and not just playing like little modules. I can see where the idea for that is actually trying to simplify things. So like, say if it's like, you know, you have your, you have your players, they're in a small town, but then there's this massive enemy army. And like, if the players are going interacting and stuff here, you know, helping helping the good guys defeat them like over here how does that impact the whole world mm-hmm. and like a lot of gms kind of like just vaguely like okay i guess in general everything's getting worse for the bad guys or like in this area but it's like a simpler like maybe stat block or something to keep up with it it's easy to get tunnel vision it's easy to get tunnel vision as a gm at your table of this is what's happening in the blue marshes and you forget completely that there are other areas that as soon as your arc is done here you gotta make something happen somewhere else and if you haven't built into the rest of the world how's that happening um so i do think that that's a a really smart move i really love that i'm very interested to see that i will also say though some of the criticism that i have heard from folks about daggerheart is that there is there's heavy lifting for the gm in a way it, 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 again, it's a double-edged sword because this heavy lifting always exists, right? It exists in Dungeons and Dragons. You just don't know about it as a new GM. I think what Daggerheart and what Darrington Press and Critical Role are trying to do is to showcase, hey, this is this thing that you're going to find out later, new GM. We're going to help mm-hmm. you. I worry that maybe if I was setting up training courses, right? This would be, say, I'm onboarding you. I wouldn't hit you with this in week two, you know? I'd hit you with this a month in and be like, okay, now we have to talk about consequences in the world, you know? Um, So, but I think it's going to be incredible as a tool for people. They also mentioned, like, literally an onboarding packet for new GMs. I'm curious if they might have it as, like, hey, first section, just do a one shot. Here's all you look at. Don't worry about the rest. And then after that, it may literally take you through that, like you're saying. Yeah. I, I, so I know that again, I always talk about my experience with Adventurers League and stuff like that, but I found that to be one of the most 
groundbreaking experiences that I had as a person getting into the tabletop RPG community of those people, like myself, I became one of those people in Adventures mm -hmm. League, who would host new player guidance sessions and new GM guidance sessions and everybody would come in and it's just because we're all like nerds and usually the GM group, we're all note-taking nerds, so we're all just sitting there with our pencils just like, okay, yes, mm, a stat block, huh? Like, <laughs> I think that's, but it was so huge because number one it gave you a sense of community it gave you guidance it was just it was a beautiful thing um mm -hmm. which does bring me to you know just i think that there are still maybe one or two more 1.5 items but as part of this discussion one thing that they talked about is all of the different helping tools that they're trying to establish one thing that i am really excited about for critical role is that and Justin, we talked about this right before we launched the stream. I think Critical Role is in such a perfect position here. I'm holding my hands like they're a little nest egg. Such a perfect position. They're primed to be able to support a community to really learn their module in a way that a lot of very small groups, they can put forth an incredible system. But it's, it's on you to learn it. There is nothing mm -hmm. to help you. Um, and then the, the uh, behemoth of the industry, yes, they have some of those tools, but it gets, you said, buried in all of the other stuff. Um, and it doesn't seem to be pivotal to their purpose anymore. They're, it's, so... I'm really excited for Critical Roles and Darrington Press's kind of things that they're talking about are things like videos for players, like player helper videos, things like that. I remember they used to do... Uh, hamburger Helper is the one they referenced. Hamburger Helper! Yeah, absolutely! <laughs> I remember. They used to do, what was it called? It, there was like a whole series, I think it was launched through Felicia Day's company, Geek and Sundry, that was um, DM Tips, a GM Tips, I think. It was one that they ran and they had different people like um, Matt Mercer. I don't know why I am blanking and thinking only of a specific GM who has been excommunicated from from the industry. Uh, uh, d d Matt Colville, I think, might have. I don't think so. I don't think he was there. But he's not excommunicado, and I can only think of the excommunicado one. Anyway, oh well. Um, but those kinds of things, I think, are really helpful, and I think it would be so good for the growth of this community and this system. I really am excited. So, anyway, that's a great one. Um, what else in 1.5? I think we only we were down to like the last one or two. Right? Well, well, I thought they mentioned was the locations, but I didn't. I think they kind of just kind of glossed over that one and went straight into the campaign frames. Uh, so I didn't catch too much on that one. Yeah, uh, but we knew that this was coming where they were, and this has been a lot of people asking things about like. So we have, honestly. I don't think that people are really talking enough and giving enough credit to how much is in this manuscript because it has so it has several locales, you know, again, the Sablewood messengers that we played at our table, it wasn't just the module I built from the Sablewood environment that was there inside of the manuscript and it really came to life, I feel like. They have several of those. They have, oh my God, Jindalia. Oh my God, am I excited about Jindalia. Oh, it's so cool. I know that there's the Dwindalia joke there, but the city of, I think it's like recompense or payment or give me money. I don't know. So excited <laughs> about that city, uh, the Kinnikos and Jags. Um, but inevitably people want to see more of your world. And, you know, let's go back real quick to their, their, their starting screen. Man, I have to... <laughs> I have to stop doing that. I keep clicking that thing. Um, anyway, let's go back to the daggerheart.com website. And you can actually see that they have all these different backgrounds with different terrains, you know. And I'm excited because we know that Matt Mercer and Spencer Stark, the storytelling aspect is where they really thrive. Like, they... Just coming up with weird animals is thrilling, you know, like um, I'm excited to see the worlds that they build and I'm excited to live in them and play in them. Oh, anyway, so 
Okay, um, so we'll get more out of out of 1.5 for that. Um, and we're going to have to because, again, nothing else is coming after 1.5. That's the end. That's it until launch, um, which does bring me to kind of the last piece that I had, again, because there have been so many questions around this. I had questions around this of what happens when we get to the end? Do we, are we, do we have to stop playing it? Do they pull back all their materials and they're like, if you use them, we, no, we knew that they were never going to do that, right? Um, but no, they, they've they been very clear that they want you to keep playing. They're excited about you keeping playing. They're going to keep Demi playing up and running with 1.5 loaded and active until, um, you know, the official launch. But yeah, that's, that, oh God. I can't believe, I know we still have a month and a half, but it is coming to an end, and I'm so sad. All right, um, okay, well, anyway, that aside, what other items did you want to touch base on, Justin? You know, they were uh, just like different bits they were asking on for feedback before the end of next month, which definitely around like, uh, like they definitely wanna see like how the people are liking, uh, progressing like more slower games, I don't see slower, but like, some some of some people are doing like one session level up one session level up every time we're doing a little more slower paced after we reach a certain kind of checkpoint or you know uh, milestone then we'll level up uh, they're wanting the feedback from like our i don't say slower group but they're wanting feedbacks from our kind of thing uh, they're also wanting the specific level ranges uh, that they were seeing I, I can't remember if they said specific classes with that uh but they're just like wanting to like especially like the higher level ones and not the max level range they're getting a lot Four of that to but, nine. Like, yeah, you know, 49 was the area that I'm not hearing too much on. Yeah. Um, and I know we we're kind of, uh, oh, we might do some like, you know, uh, play sessions with like higher levels. I think like we that. have to. I think we have to. When else are we going to get the chance to like be on the ground floor? <sighs> I, I definitely think we also need to like try out some other classes just so one for ourselves to try out and for like us to give our feedback across like, so the whole too. thing. Because yeah. like we keep mentioning druids, but we haven't actually seen one in action. Not at all. Uh, it could be, yeah. Yeah, totally different vibe just by skimming through it. And that was the first I'd actually seen of the beast forms. Yeah. Uh, like I knew generally what it was, but yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. end result, Justin, myself, and Steven have some talking to do because um, I, man, do I love a good call to action. The burden of responsibility weighs heavy on my shoulders that I really must help. I must attend to the to the needs of the community, and they need I, and. We only have a month and a half left, and they so um so levels. Key premise is that they need feedback for levels. It sounds like four to eight is still the sticking point. Nine is mm, a little bit there, but four to eight is the sticking point. And they said, guys, if you could run some one shots, just run some one shots in those level four to eight. Get us that feedback. So we're gonna look at what we can do because we really just have to. And you know, your girl's getting is ready. So I think I think we're gonna have to do that. Um, okay, so. <sighs> All right. I do want to have this little corner as well, just because it's another one of these. And each time I have had a question answered, and that was the the lead in, guys. I've I've a lucky duck. They always choose at least they always choose one of my questions, and I got one again. And this one was that it was I had asked question, you know. We got feedback when 1.4 launched of the specific areas that you could help with. But again, what are the areas that now, moving into these minor revisions, closing the loop, what can we help with? That was one of the points is those one shots of levels four through eight, specifically before the close of open beta. Um, although again, I think they're still accepting feedback after that, it's just gonna slow down. It's gonna get harder for them to pay attention to. They do, they did say they want to hear submissions from people who are gonna, are now, and are going to run long-term campaigns. So man, we're gonna write a book because we're just gonna keep playing ours, um, and, you know, forever. Um, but they also did mention, I wanna talk about three other items. They did still say, and we know this is a point of contention in the community, armor weapons we know that okay so please continue looking at the armor continue looking at the weapons let them know what they can you know kind of alter um but then spencer stark also brought up domain cards and this one makes a lot of sense to me i bet that this is a lot of the crux of those levels four through eight 
if you're not running levels four through eight, I bet you're not utilizing those domain cards specifically very often. I so not a Matt and Spencer call to action, but maybe a Rachel Justin call to action, guys. Um, if you don't have the opportunity to run a one shot, maybe just peruse the domain cards for those levels, especially and get feedback around those. You know, that might be a little band aid for a problem. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I feel like read over uh like i know like for I mean, some of my players we like uh do a lot of like kind of i don't want to say min maxing kind of just like chatting about like strong builds and stuff but just reading over the cards you may like read over it think of a really uh, good idea or, or a way that may be overpowered how you can use a certain card yeah. and like if you were to play a character up this you can definitely see how it can play out as a scenario without having to actually do it yeah, uh, yeah. And that feedback's definitely helpful yeah absolutely fully agree um one other item that I wanted to talk based on, and then I'm really just in wrap up here, is um, just because it's just it's come up like three different times in the last week for our table. There was a question around rewarding players with inspiration, right? This is a very well beloved tool in tabletop, and especially in Schmungeons and Smaggins. No, it's Dungeons and Dragons. We still love Dungeons and Dragons, guys. We don't like. I don't. I don't. That's on yeah, exactly. This is a thing that also is going on in the community. Is like, do we not like this at this point? Also, Mark songs. What about weapons and armor? And hello, um, we were just saying that some of the communication that was happening today in Matt and Spencer's open beta uh, feedback discussion was that. Right now, some of the feedback that they're looking for before open beta closes at the end of July is specifically for reviewing those weapon tables, reviewing those armor tables, and getting them feedback on those because it's just been contentious in the community. So, hi! And if you um, if you have a chance to look over any of that, please do. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, back to the point of inspiration as a topic it's a well beloved item people love dungeons and dragons people are gonna want inspiration at their tables it came up as a question for matt and spencer in their q a portion of the call call again why do i say that i just like <laughs> I, I wasn't on a call with them you guys i would love to be but they won't talk to me no i'm kidding um <laughs> so it, that came up in the q a was uh how could we do inspiration at home could we use that advantage disadvantage or, or advantage and they said yeah yeah absolutely you could do that but they also proposed if you really want to use advantage, then you could do a D6, or sorry, a hope instead. You could use a hope granting system uh, because, and I immediately had the reaction while I was talking with Justin of, mm, I want to roll a die. I don't want it. And he was like, yeah, but that, but hope in this game is currency. You can use it. And I was like, Touche. So. <laughs> they're also suggesting, like, if the party all does something grand together, they could all get a hope, not just, you know, individual players getting their, like, inspiration or equivalent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Mark Songs is, at, is saying, IDK, anything about this tabletop RPG? Is it like Pathfinder? Um, You know what, Justin, how much Pathfinder have you played? Is it Fair, on that yeah, one? fairly I fresh. All the other ones are not I, Pathfinder. I, I don't think I I don't think that it's very similar to Pathfinder in my understanding. Now, are all tabletop RPGs similar? Certainly, absolutely. But in general, I don't I wouldn't say that this is a Pathfinder similar item, or an old it's school D and D branch. more kind of narrative focused. So. Ooh, Mark Songs, we need you in our Discord, friend, because you know about older iterations of stuff. I don't know if you ever played Roll Masters, but I used to, and it was awful. No, but um. No. If you're familiar with uh, Genesis, I would say it's probably more comparable to that with a slight hint of D&D. Uh, kind of, yeah. Yeah, this is this is actually meant to, I, I would not say it moves away from crunchy rule systems at all. It still has some crunch there, but it is meant to more so align with the expectations of a narrative tabletop RPG, mostly in tune with the role-playing elements, with still some light... Um, not light no there there's absolutely still combat and stuff like that um but there really is an emphasis on the role-playing aspect of it um also hey friend you seem like a person who loves tabletop rpg could i convince you in supporting daggerheart mm -hmm. 
<laughs> he used to play role master, loved the crit system, so crunchy. Do I really have to look up a table to see if I can swim across this river? Please, no. <laughs> like, but you did. It was wild, so. But yeah, Mark Songs, listen, if you want to try out a new tabletop RPG that's coming up and give feedback in a meaningful way that could affect the community at large, call to action, my friend. Been playing on and off since 79. Play Daggerheart on and off since 2024, my friend. <laughs> Come on, truly. Uh, I, I have nothing, uh, by the way, not affiliated with their organization at all. Just really love the stuff that they do over there at Darrington Press. I love the laughing emoji. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's that's my piece on inspiration. Um, what other items do you have, Justin? Don't think I have anything else at the moment. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, the other bits they were talking about, like uh, for whatever it does that actually end up coming at the end, they may not have a lot of variations on like what all weapons and like for different. Uh, I think what the what's what they call them like. You know, this one's kind of more of a fan fantasy setting, but I guess settings the word I'm looking for. Yes. Uh, they're not going to have different like types of equipment for different settings, different characters for that kind of thing. But you can always just reskin the stuff if you have a longbow. Uh, you can easily just make that into a laser rifle uh, using the same stats. That yeah. was the example Matt gave. But well, you know, and that was the only one. That came up as a question as well is someone said oh man i don't have the discord link but i bet justin will get it for you don't even worry about that mark songs and i am working on the command for a discord as well but yeah we'll get you there don't you even worry about it um but that is something that was very exciting was thank you so much that was something that was very exciting a question got thrown in of what if any plans do you critical role darrington press have for introducing other themes into your game other genres you know tabletop rpg for those of you who aren't in here right it's not just fantasy that's one of the criticisms that people have of daggerheart i disagree with it but is that we have enough fantasy we need more insert x genre people want horror people want um sci-fi people want uh, things that are more in line with oh my gosh why am i cyberpunk you know um they were asking Darrington Press and Critical Role, what is your aim there? Are you wanting to do anything like that? And it's it's just so funny watching those guys because they just kind of shifty glance at each other. And they're like, yeah, uh, that'd be cool. <laughs> like, So yes, do they want to do that stuff? Yes. Do you have to, you, dear audience, do you have to support the system and support the team if you want more of a footprint into that, your next favorite genre? Yeah, you do. Um, and just remember, guys, my big note is that I really do think of this group as a powerhouse in the arena and capable of coming in and affecting real change in tabletop rpg so if you want someone that could subvert or provide a razor's edge to tabletop rpg that you want to see a competitive stance in this is the team to support in my humble opinion so um all right but yeah genre stuff is great anything else i i think i'm out of topics at this mm -hmm. point ready to ready for next fight see how the adjustments oh. help us survive or not i'm so sorry i do have one other thing which is i've saved the worst for last the heavy hitters critiques that i'm hearing from people which is so guys leading mm -hmm. up to this leading up to this um the Darrington Press group asked the players of the community to submit their heavy hitting builds, those min max OP builds that do incredible things, stuff like uh, hitting as hard as you can, stuff like um, utilizing rerolls to get exactly what you want. Um, and a lot of the feedback has now been. Did you guys use this to nerf our friends? <laughs> because, 
because of all the changes that happened to like the classes and and uh, and specifically to the ancestries, um, because now a lot of those heavy hitters will have been made defunct. Um, but it, yeah, it did, it did make me feel a little better when they went through some of the examples of heavy hitters. Were like, hey, here's these that can do some crazy output, but they were like, no, this is this is perfectly fine. This is what we want to keep in there. Keep keep using these builds. Not changing that. Yeah. We just wanted to find the ones that are game breaking, not the ones that are, you know, game breakingly fun versus game breakingly terrible for everyone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's really what I wanted to kind of hit home on. And Mark Songs, I see your question. I will absolutely do that for you in just a second. Um, but yeah, th that's really where it hit home, hit home for me is that. I wanted to end that debate here as though I have any stance in the community that will be listened to. But guys, that's not what it was. That's not what was happening. Okay. They just were excited to see what, what was out there. They are really, they, I don't think they're in the business of breaking up these big min max builds or these heavy swings. They want to see those. They're excited to see those. They do want to avoid breaking stuff, but that's it. So guys, if that was your concern, please. Yeah, they want the ready. dagger, 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 but not the, you know, infinite speed and, you know, 15 actions. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. That's, that is an exact, yes. Mm -hmm, perfect. So Mark Songs is a perfect time. We have a question in chat. So if this makes it to the YouTube VOD, uh, <laughs> this is going to be, can you give a brief intro to Dagger Heart for a noob? I absolutely can. I give it every single week. Um, so First, Dagger Heart is a new tabletop RPG, which is a tabletop role-playing game. You're very familiar. A system from Darrington Press, primarily, which is the publishing house that has been created under Critical Role. Critical Role, kind of the juggernaut of the tabletop RPG space, created, um, well, not created, but first going live about... 10 years ago, about a decade ago now, um, first with Felicia Day's organization, or Felicia Day was one of the founding members of Geek and Sundry, who hosted the channel. Um, of course, they had converted their game actually from Pathfinder, so interestingly to your discussion, from Pathfinder into Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, which was in its infancy at that point. It had just, um, it was, it wasn't just out, but it was fairly new. Uh, they played Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition and no, I don't think many people credit Critical Role for giving tabletop RPG its stance again, right? But did it breathe new life into the community? Absolutely it did. And then of course other things like 80s nostalgia, Stranger Things, those kinds of details um, helped to feed it. Critical Role is now massive. They founded their own publishing house for board games uh, just a few years ago. They've put out a couple of board games, a couple of card games, and after last year, um, Nope, I don't want to go into any of the... I'm not going to go into any community concerns. Um, but suffice to say, they started working on a tabletop RPG probably around two years ago, I would say. We started hearing true whisperings about them about a year ago at Gen Con. Uh, Darrington Press actually did hold kind of sessions uh, with some people that I know in the community at this point. Um, they did ho host sessions which were kind of build your own module, build your own adventure kind of games. Um, but the system itself is in the fantasy genre, so it is very classic to what you would expect. I actually have an example of some of the ancestries here on my screen. This is not all of them, but these are things that you might see. You're going to have your standard humans, your elves, your dwarves, your giants, your orcs, but you do get some fun ones as well. You know, you get some ribbits, which is a, com a beloved ancestry by the community. We are in love with ribbits, especially a person like me. I'm a chrono trigger girly, just FYI. Um, and simias, which are our little monkey friends. The, the water mark makes it a little difficult to see, but they are their monkey friends. Um, but it's, it's primarily meant to be driven in a fantasy system. The big difference between Daggerheart and, and Dungeons and & Dragons is that instead of using a D20, which everyone's familiar with, uh, it uses Hope and Fear Dice, 2D12 instead of a D20. One represents your hope, one represents your fear. 
When you try to make a skill check, you roll both. Depending on what you roll, you either have hope or fear. In this case, I rolled higher on my hope die, so I gain hope. That helps to determine how the world interacts with me and consequences of my actions. Um, but you add the dice together for your score. That determines if you build, if you defeat the difficulty and thereby succeed the check. But that hope and that fear is really how the world reacts around you. Um, beyond that, it's pretty simplistic. You know, I'll, I, I can pull up. I would a, say the uh, yeah. like you know class abilities and stuff is a little more mix and match. You can choose which abilities you use, like for their domain cards mm -hmm. instead of like being say a ranger with these specific uh, features every time or even with different subclasses you have a handful of different cards you can pick from you pick your one or two you have that those abilities until you level up and gain more uh, but those fit into like you know your cleric kind of fit I, I'm not, I don't know these domains off the top of my head but who's in what but like for mine is a rogue it's the uh oh geez I'm trying to remember what I, I've even playing as it's like grace and midnight I believe uh, I, like that. I can't remember, but you, but I, but yeah, absolutely. You, I can pull up an, a bardic example. So this is a bard in the game, and you can see that each class gets two different options. So in this case, you get uh, access to the Grace deck. At level one, that gives you three options. Those extend into different levels. Um, but you also get the Codex. You can mix and match these for your abilities as a bard. Um, and those go into your pool of abilities. So bards, for example, can utilize the Book of Iliad at level one to, for example, uh, cast things like Slumber to make people sleep. Um, are hope and fear used for combat too? They absolutely are. Hope, actually, uh, you accrue it on your character sheet if we go back up to the top. Um, the, the hope is definitely your like kind of positive game loop. You roll what are you roll in that direction, you're still doing well. Uh, get granted where you can do more abilities. It's kind of you know your spell slots kind of thing. Uh, you can use you spend hope to do more things, uh, or even to like you know. Uh, for like my dwarf character, I can spend multiple hope and half the damage coming into me. Yeah. Uh, but that kind of also like on the combat, uh, it's definitely a lot more whoever is ready to go, wants to go, has something to do, can jump in whatever instead of like you waiting your turn for 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, definitely a lot more flowy. And fear is used for combat as well. But interestingly, just because you're asking, fear is not used by the players. Fear is something that the GM grabs and takes hold of as it is rolled at the table. There is a limit to how much you can utilize, but you use fear kind of as, I have never said this to my players, sorry Justin, you're hearing this for the first time, but I kind of consider you the arbiter of fate. So you are the person that holds the negative impact in the world and gets to decide how to impact it. So for example, I can utilize a fear to say, oh my God, lightning has crashed on the fields surrounding your house in a flame is now outside chasing you down but in combat you absolutely can use that as well it is kind of your currency uh though there's a secondary currency that i won't get into um but interestingly again because you're bringing up combat one of the key differences is that uh at least between i think both pathfinder and dungeons and dragons is that there's not an initiative order in Daggerheart. it's meant to be more loosey-goosey jump in when you want it uh there is an action economy between the player or characters when, and the adversaries but yeah, or just when fear is rolled bad guys are stepping in <laughs> yes absolutely yeah you, you, so that's, um, you know, that was actually brought up today during Matt and Spencer's stream was uh, that they had said one of the things that surprised, I think Matt said, one of the things that surprised him the most was how engaging it feels to play this game. And I agree, this is something that's come up in our at home discussions, right? Is that in Dungeons and Dragons, if you're playing with a party of six, you take your turn and you can walk away from the table. Sure, you'll have to kind of ask people what happened before your turn comes back around, maybe. Um, but people often are on their phones or they are on their laptops. They're helping take care of, a, of an animal because there's no consequence for tapping out and there's no incentive to stay engaged a lot of the time. Daggerheart subverts that. You don't have that issue. You really get to just drive forward with the combat and stay engaged because at any point, if you could use a spell that would help, 
You don't have to hope and pray that the enemies don't move away from the circle that they're in to use your AOE. You just get to use it. Um, it's really cool. It's a fantastic system. Um, strongly, strongly recommend trying it out. Um, you know, it's not for the faint of heart since we are in open beta and we're doing revisions right now, revision cycles. If you want to wait for a, sol a solidified version, wait for the end of July when 1.5, or sorry, uh, early July to mid July when open beta 1.5 is there. But if you want to impact stuff, then absolutely. Um, if you want to impact what will be my next great love in tabletop RPG, and I think will be a lot of other people's, now is the time to get your party, gather your party, get them playing this game because these developers are actually taking feedback in a way that I don't see happen a lot in tabletop RPG or anywhere. Um, I'm just really excited, guys, because it's been a very fun little road. I know we've only been doing this for three months. It's been a minute. April, May, June. We're at three months, effectively. I mean, we started a couple weeks later, but almost three months. But it'll close in another month and a half, so... We're going to talk about planning and, yeah, have a good time. Thank you, Mark. That's great. Grab that play test. That's incredible to hear. I'm so glad that I've affected change and pulled a soul in with us. Welcome to the party. It's a fun time. So, <laughs> all right. I'm going to call that going out on a win. Definitely. Uh, I'm just going to recap a reminder when we normally are uh, streaming. Yeah. Oh yeah, fantastic. If you want to catch uh, actual videos of a team that plays, we don't just talk about Dagger Heart, we play it here on the channel. Um, you could go to our YouTube where we have the VODs of all of our sessions up for context, and there's only like seven, um, but you could also tune in live. We go live on Monday, 6.30 US, 6.30 PM, US Pacific here on Twitch. Our VODs are posted on Fridays to YouTube and we are wrapping up a little campaign arc right now. So if you want to see a final battle and get all your answers about combat answered this upcoming Monday, tune in while I p p might kill the party, you know? Um, yeah. Could, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> so, all right. Well, thank you everybody for being here. Thanks, Justin, so much. Anything no last to add? All right. See you all on Monday. Thank you guys. See y'all on Monday. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs>